Who ever thought Mars would seem so Earth-like? Every picture the rover Perseverance sends back of its rocky terrain and climate is more amazing than the last. It's easy to forget this is NASA's first true astrobiological mission searching for signs of life on another planet. Scientists are uncovering the mysteries of the red planet in real time. We have confirmation of entry interface. And when its secrets are revealed, the odds are good a Canadian will have a front row seat, like Montreal native and current NASA engineer Farah Alibe, or perhaps in the future Toronto's Shamira Andres, whose trajectory has taken her to the European Space Agency. Touchdown confirmed. Along the way, they're rewriting how we perceive people in and around mission control. Alibe has become one of the new faces of NASA, as much for the complicated work she does on the semi-autonomous helicopter ingenuity as the fearlessness she shows in her personal life. Her singular focus right now is on ingenuity, which could arguably be one of NASA's greatest achievements. Programming a helicopter to fly autonomously on another planet is being likened to the Wright brothers' first flight 117 years ago in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. As a young girl, she never imagined herself among the pioneers of space exploration. I didn't have that growing up. I didn't have someone who looked like me in this position, right? I think I grew up in the 90s where, like, sure, there was a lot of interest in space, but a lot of people in these positions were white men. And, and it took a while for me to even allow myself to dream that I could be part of these people. Fortunately, she never gave up on her dreams. And while the Mars rover is named Perseverance, it has nothing on Alibay, who moved to England as a Francophone teenager before attending prestigious Cambridge University. When she struggled, it made her work that much harder. And when NASA didn't hire her at first, and then again and again, she always looked for another door to open. It's not like the first NASA internship I put in that they accepted. I probably had like 50 of them rejected and one day someone took interest at a dinner at a conference, took interest in my research and offered me an internship. Around the same time NASA's Ingenuity Project was conceived in 2013, a young Filipina Canadian was imagining her future to be on a different, more artistic stage. And Shamira Andres was singularly focused on ballet until a ride on a roller coaster changed her life. It was a high school science project, ride the coaster and take measurements, but it lit a fire inside her to study the mysteries of the universe. She ultimately chose to pursue science, but ballet was always tugging on her to return. And now, as a young graduate trainee with the European Space Agency in the Netherlands, she likes the flexibility of having many talents. For me, I would really love to be a dancing astronaut, if that is a profession that I can make. <laughs> um, but um, for now, I'm trying to find my passion in planetary geophysics and science communication and education. To that end, she's also the president of a group called Students for the Exploration and Development of Space. Yes, she likes to keep busy. So she wants to study ice on Mars, figure out a way to become an astronaut, and inspire students to follow their own path in science. Space is contagious, I think. So when, once you've talked about space to someone and you've got them hooked, it's kind of the hook that you need to just get them interested and start talking about it. Three, two, one, zero. Canadians have a long history inspiring space exploration. After the Canadian government scrapped the Avro Aero project in 1959, many of its engineers moved south to contribute to the moon landing. In many respects, not much has changed in the last 60 years. For Canadians to explore the universe, they first have to leave Canada. We have the brains and a space agency, but there are limits to what is done here. We don't have NASA, we don't have uh, the various NASA labs. But there is definitely, you know, there is an ecosystem. Where Canada excels is in education. McGill professor Ina Scharf's research into automation and space debris attracts international students. But she knows they'll take what they learn from her and go far. And I think that's a great thing. That's a great thing. But I, again, I hope that they'll come back eventually. I hope they'll 
start companies or come and work for, for the companies that we have here. For every rule, there's an exception. And Eitan Bulka is just that. When he's finished his PhD at McGill on increasing the autonomy of unmanned aerial vehicles, the Boston native hopes to find a job right here. So, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities here in Montreal, so I'm actually only looking to stay in Montreal. Canada does have a large aerospace sector that employs almost 100,000 people, but StatsCan reports the vast majority of our companies, 93%, export parts for planes. Yet Bulka sees opportunity. So I think when you get very specialized, it in the past it was, you know, you kind of had to move to California. But now a lot of these companies are, are First of all, there are more in Canada and in Montreal, and they're more open to having remote employees. Borders, it seems, are for countries, not companies anymore. Alibay went from Montreal to England and then back to North America, where she's found a home in California. And, and eventually I made it, and I made it where I wanted to be, um, mostly because this was my dream. And so every time someone told me no, every time I failed, I was like, well, let me just try again. See if someone else will let me. And Andres may be working in Holland right now, but she'll soon start her PhD in France, where she'll no doubt continue dancing. As precise as she is, she likes to point out there's no linear path to the stars. For me right now, I think there, there are a lot of possibilities. Not everything is impossible. Possible just takes time, right?